Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Kalika and you're going to be nicer to call center staff after watching this video. Really? You bill for $200 an hour? So this is a rather short story as it happened close to a year ago, but it's probably one of my few examples of someone being banned from calling us. So I work in a data center. I am not a manager and not in a position where I'd be comfortable saying that I am if one is out of the room. Even though I'm the most senior in my position and everyone kind of defers to me in my judgement, sometimes before the manager, customers can call in to report outages, but requests must be done electronically and anything regarding their accounts is required to be handled by their local security desk. But their local security desks all tend to hear our name, DC we'll say, and tell them to call us, even for desktop issues and application issues in their computer, which is handled by a local desktop support office. On to the story. The admin, EA for Entitled Admin, calls in requesting that we reset the password for her and unlock her account for logging into our servers. Entitled Admin is not very polite about it, but I look up the account so I can refer her to the right people and let her know, unfortunately, we don't manage these accounts, you have to contact X and such grip. Entitled Admin then proceeds to tell me about how she has called numerous times in the past to have this done and this is a work stoppage for her. I won't mention every time she cursed and swore at me, but I assure you, it was about every third word starting at the beginning of the call. I have thick skin and swear like a trucker, not to your at customers, so I normally ignore when customers do it because I don't care, normally. I inform the customer that we have never been allowed to do these password resets or unlock the account. Entitled Admin proceeds to inform me that she bills her customers at $200 an hour and this is a waste of her time and their money. It takes every fibre of my being to not ask why. If she is so important and amazing to be making that much money, why she can't remember one simple password or find a secure way to store or track it. It was a very busy day and the people that usually ran our data center checks were shorthanded and swamped where we had a full team and a fairly light load. So my manager hits me up in our internal messenger and asks if I can run the check since I'm the only one in my position trained on it. Again, goes back to the most senior thing. I tell him I'll trade him. I'll do the check if he finishes dealing with my phone call. I explained the full situation to him and he knows I could have finished it, but also doesn't know why I hadn't transferred the entitled admin sooner. So I inform the customer that I'm going to have her speak with my manager, give him the call and go to do the check. I get back and ask my manager how the call finished, told him about some of the things, specifically the $200 an hour bit, and apparently she told him the same stuff and proceeded to also curse and swear at him too. She was then reported up the chain by my manager all the way to the top of our organisation who then spoke with the person at the top of Entitled Admin's organisation. Entitled Admin was then specifically debarred from ever contacting us again, which 100% led to her getting fired, I can just shy of guarantee it. Because we house all their servers and as an admin if you can't report issues to us especially when there are nationwide outages, it really feels good knowing that I likely contributed to someone like Entitled Admin probably getting fired. I probably make this comment in every single one of these call center videos but it still stands. Treat people with respect and we will respect you back and go the extra mile to help you with your issues. It isn't that hard. You need to pay us for our own mistakes. This ridiculous customer request came via our web support system, not a phone call per se and I hope that's okay here. It's pretty funny. I run a small VOIP service provider and we get a few people who not only don't even have minor technical ability like plugging in cables, but also are lazy. It leads to this. Someone clicked the dispute a charge link in one of our invoices and I decided to grab the support ticket since I had last handled the tech part of their issue. The reason for the dispute? See below. Hi, we would like to get credit for about 10 days that our phones in our offices were down last month. It took a long time for your technician to come out and fix it. They were indeed offline for almost two weeks. Why? Are we really that incompetent? No. Someone had moved cables around and reversed their ports, so the ports appeared to be connected but couldn't pass traffic. I emailed them myself four times with the link to our common issues document and with specific instructions on the port issue. Since the symptoms only happen when this is done, all of their replies were useless and I finally asked, did you do step four specifically as we know this is what causes your error? No reply. We don't do on-site service in general, but I mentioned this issue to our cabling guy, a contractor. He said he was going to be nearby and he'd go and look as a favour. He found that the cables were reversed, fixed it and all was fine. Effing idiots. Here's my answer. Your credit would amount to around $10 and that's a small office and only their phones were offline. 
In addition, another one of our people told them what to do to fix their problem more than once. Then I myself told your local office staff four more times what the issue was. Nobody did what we asked and the responses to our emails were basically just, it's still broken. Per paragraph 7 of your service agreement, if we provide on-site service and the reported trouble is found to be caused by your network or cabling, we may invoice you for $90 per hour including travel time, with a 2 hour minimum. Therefore, your next invoice will include a charge of $180 for the on-site visit. As a courtesy, however, I have applied the $10 credit for your outage time. Oh, that's got a sting. But it'll teach them to actually try and fix the problems themselves first. I've heard this a lot in things like tech support where customers will lie about trying to fix the issues themselves. The most typical issue I can think of off the top of my head is whenever the agent will say something like, oh have you tried turning it off and on again? And apparently so many people just lie and say they have when literally restarting your machine would fix the problem. I don't understand that mindset. Booking a domestic flight on an international website. So I used to work in the fraud claims department of a large bank. I got several stories of customers who were either too lazy to look carefully at the purchases they were making on websites or too dumb to know what they were signing up for. From fake companies in China to recurring chargers on de-aging cleansers to porn site renewals, the list was non-stop. However, one lady was actually both. She made a full airline reservation on an international booking website without even noticing that she was paying in GBP. She was in Baltimore and had a family emergency in Miami. She was desperately looking through so many websites looking for the cheapest possible flight. She thought she found a flight that was cheaper than any other website she searched, so she booked it. However, when she looked at her bank account, she was charged more than expected, so she calls my department and I answered her call. The flight was supposed to be $210. Why is there a pending charge for $315 and then an extra $3150? I want to file a fraud claim in this company for misrepresenting themselves. I can certainly help you with that. Let me do some research first. Do you remember or know the website you used to book your flight? Yeah, it was redacted.com. Okay, give me a moment while the page loads. Ma'am, did you notice that the currency listed on the website was not in dollars? No, I just saw the price numbers when I made my reservation. It was so cheap that I booked it right away. Did you notice the weird currency symbol? I just thought it was a weird dollar sign. Well, on the homepage of the website, they're listing the airfare special is in GBP and they use the pound symbol, which means British pounds, not US dollars. So, what does that mean? Ma'am, it seems that you paid the correct price. If your flight was for £210, then that's $315 on today's currency rate. And since it's an international purchase, then we added on a 10% foreign transaction fee. No, that's impossible. When I booked the flight, it was 210, not 315. You need to change that to 210. Me going to the site trying to book a flight. Okay, ma'am, I went through an entire booking process and the final price is being listed in pounds. The flight I was booking shows a 225 pounds, meaning I would pay in British pounds, not US dollars. At today's exchange rate, that would be about 337 dollars, plus 3370 for an international fee. No, it should be $225. We are not in England or whatever. We don't use pounds, we use dollars. I should only have to pay the price in dollars. I'm sorry, ma'am. You should have realized that the website was listing their prices in British pounds. Since you willfully entered your card info and billing info, we assumed you knew that. And therefore, no fraud claim can be filed as it was a legit purchase. If we do file a claim, it will be denied. Listen to me. I am not in England. I am in the US. I have an effing family emergency that I need to get to and I cannot deal with your crap. Just file the claim, give me my money back and we can go on with our lives. At this point I went with another strategy just to get her off the phone. Basically, since I knew it was a legit purchase, we cannot file anything, but... Well ma'am, at this point since the charge is still pending, we cannot file a claim on it until it actually posts to your account. If you want to call back, we can certainly help you. Fine, I'll call back then. She hangs up. I made some notes on the account that the customer made a legit purchase and should have realised she was paying in pounds. I followed up on the account a few days later. She actually did file a claim for misrepresentation of price. And in the claim notes, she even said she used the ticket, 100% certain that her claim was denied. I can't believe that the customer actually said she thought the pound symbol was just a weird dollar sign. <laughs> no, we won't replace your thousand dollar phone that was stolen because you declined the insurance that covered loss or theft. I'm one of those lucky souls who gets to deal with the people from the deepest, darkest depths of hell. 
Now, not all of the calls are from entitled twat waffles, but this one? It would have amazed me a few years ago. Now I'm just amazed that this sort of thing doesn't surprise me anymore because I've seen it too many times. Karen is transferred to me from a rep who sounds like they're about to cry. This lady was so mean and demanding she almost made one of my most tenured agents cry. I do not take kindly to people being rude or mean. I can handle venting and being frustrated all day long. However, when you cross that line, there's no going back. Karen's barely teenager child lost their phone that retails for over a thousand dollars. Why would you give a child that young a phone that costs that much is a whole different story in itself. They have over $800 left owed on it. When she bought the phone, Karen declined to get insurance. She didn't want to pay for it on a monthly basis. Fine, no sweat off our backs. If you want to take that risk, that's absolutely up to you. But now that the phone is lost, Karen wants us to replace it free of charge. She wants to either get the remaining balance wiped clean or she wants us to send her a new phone. She does not want to activate an old phone for the meantime. If we don't, she's going to take all her lines to another carrier because they would give her a free phone in this situation. That's not how it works. You don't get a loan on a car, fail to get insurance and then demand your car finance company replace said car when it's stolen. Don't expect the same from your cell phone provider. If you don't pay for the insurance that covers loss and theft, be ready for the consequences of that choice if your phone gets lost. Don't yell at me because you gave a 13 year old a thousand dollar phone and they lost it and don't make my people cry. Even if I could do something about it, once you cross that line, I won't. You get nothing. At all. I've dealt with people like this in the past and usually if you push back on someone like a Karen for not having insurance, they will go on about their loyalty to the company, saying things like, well I've been with you for two years so I deserve a replacement. It made me want to hang up on so many entitled people. If you're going to be giving your child an expensive smartphone for whatever reason, just get insurance on it instead of doubling down on your bad decisions. Okay, so that's all for r slash tales from call centers. I really hope you did enjoy it. As always, if you do want to see more content like this, then please do subscribe. My Twitter, Discord and Patreon links are in the description and any support is greatly appreciated. And as it's Sunday, I also want to say a massive thank you to my wonderful patrons. Backwards D-Dog, Tyler Miller, Jens Banning, Kate McCutcheon, Skylar A, Elizabeth Fillmore, Two Chooks, and Jen Burton. Thank you so much for your support. Mwah. That's for you, but keep it between us, okay? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Bye!